So we've got a, a 66 plate Ford Transit, which is making a mess on my floor as we speak. And um, yeah, found on road dead. How brilliant, a metal pipe just leaking away there. Girls and guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we have a Ford, or commonly known as found on road dead, with a water leak from that pipe there, which clearly looks like it's come off HMS Titanic. Uh, that pipe goes one bolt there and then into the block. Now to get to it, uh, we are gonna need to remove the, zoom out a little bit, to remove the starter motor to get good access. This was, with, like lifting water out like you wouldn't believe. You couldn't put it in quick enough. Like a customer used like 10 liters of water just to get here and it was a short distance. So we've already diagnosed it, already found it, already ordered the part. So now's the nice easy bit of um, fitting it. So what we're gonna do, I've disconnected the power at the junction box at the top. I cracked this off and I thought, mm, time to make a video because someone might have a water leak in that area and hopefully this might help someone. So once you've disconnected the top, this is a 13 here for the earth cable. We're gonna get everything out of the way and I'll show you how. All right, so there's two bolts, one that goes here and one that goes up at the top, two 13s. I've disconnected that plug because it went into the starter. And then it's one 13 on the back there. I'm gonna get it off, get the starter motor nice and out of the way so I can actually get access to the remnants of the Titanic. So we've got the starter motor out and now we can see it a little bit more clearly. I believe there is one eight mil nut bolt, sorry, focus. One eight mil at the top, one Titanic 10 mil, and then one pipe. So it should be easy, but is it gonna be easy? No. So let's find out a little bit more then. Okay, that was a little bit more awkward than what I, uh, what I realized. What I did is I've left everything on the EGR exchanger and stuff, and you can see, no you can't, I've removed it from there without taking it out. What did it cost? It Cross my torch dropping. I made a very short eight mil spanner. Focus. Yeah, it was an eight mil nut and my flexi ones. And I pissed around and pissed around and pissed around and eventually got it out. But let's be honest, I've probably got to replace that nut now because I've chewed the bizzle out of it. But I got I got it off, which is good now. Gonna clean up, clean up inside there. So we're gonna clean up in that hole. That thread is okay. I disconnected that sensor as well. Just give me a little bit more purchase when removing. Um, and undone the pipe from the heat exchanger because it was just a little bit easier. So here's the part. The part number, if anyone does need it, is Golf Kilo 2, Q for question, dash 8 Kilo 556. So hopefully, if anyone does need this pipe, the part number's there for you. And hopefully, this job will show you how to do it. Now, let's get it on. Right, we are all in and tight. It is now time to fit the starter motor. Uh, I used, to tighten it up, because I changed to a 10 mil spanner, a 10 mil bolt, a swan, swan neck 10 mil to tighten it up. Now, it's refit the starter motor time, pressurize the coolant system time, hope for no leaks, and this transit should be back on the road, ready to break down again. Okay, we're all back together. Earth leads on, the 213s, wire ends exactly what it should. Everything's reconnected again, all the switches and stuff, and all the pipes are connected. So now we are gonna lower it down, fill it up with some coolant, check for leaks, and hopefully this will be back on road shortly. Five liters down, and we're gonna need some more because it's not even running yet. But we're just connecting this now, pop the little cap off. Uh, I think that was 15 or 16 mil, but remember to tighten it up. So now I've turned it around, got it outside just to bleed the coolant system. The level was quite high now it's dropped. We had previously marked it because we didn't know where this water was going. So now we're gonna wait for the fan to cut in. Um, hopefully that level's gonna drop when the air bubbles come up. I've got it on a slight incline just so it's got a bit of a tilt. It helps the air come up. Who knows? I mean, I could use the pressure bleeder, but this is just nice and easier. Then we I can get on with another job. But so far, it's nice and dry under the car. Oh man. So this one is nearly there. Right, all up temperature, everything's all good, we've got no leaks, top up to max, hot air blowing out of the cabin, all good. This one, done. 